change the subject slightly. I mean, what are you what are you currently playing with? I saw you yesterday twirling a Donay Raga. Yeah, I've been playing with Donay for a couple of years now. I play with the XP Dual Pro. It's about 102 square inches. Uh, I asked the guy that customizes all my rackets and has for years, Roman Prokes, a couple of years ago, I said, Roman, I need a, a little bigger frame because I, I'm feeling like I need a bigger sweet spot now. I'm getting a little bit older, a little bit uh, losing a little bit of foot speed. I need a little help from the technology. I've been playing with a racket that was 90 square inches, very small sweet spot, a very thin beam. I wanted to have a little bit more power, a little bit more uh, margin for error with it. And also, as a result of it being a bigger head, I needed to make it a little bit lighter to be able to get the racket through the air, the, the, the bigger mass through the air at the same speed that I was accustomed to with my 90 square inch racket. So I switched to that, and I play a combination of a normal nylon string in the mains, uh, a very cheap string you can find anywhere, and then I use, uh, I use a, a Copoly 16 gauge in the cross to give me that that little extra spin. I don't like playing with, uh, with a full Copoly. I've tried that a few times. And for my game, I already have pretty extreme grips. So what I want to do is have a little bit more control but still have the ability to flatten the ball out to finish points. Because I don't want to play the kind of points that Djokovic and Del Potro are playing. I, I physically can't anymore. My body won't be able to sustain it if I do. And I, and I don't have to when I'm playing against Andre or Pete or Mac on the PowerShare series. And our points are going to be relatively quick compared to the tour standard these days. So I'm just looking for the ability to play aggressive, offensive, controlled tennis, and that's what that setup gives me. And when you're on tour, you, you know, as you're saying, you used a much smaller head size. Mm. You know, Federer is still using a 90 square inch racket. Right. Is there an advantage to using a smaller head size, if any? You know, I I played with an 85. I played with the Wilson Pro Staff, which was the earlier iteration of what Federer plays with. He plays with a 90 square inch. Pro staff. That's what he plays with. Basically, it's just a, a newer technology in there, but it's the same same beam, same frame. And if I knew then what I know now, I would have gone to a bigger frame because it, I, I now understand why Andre could stand at the baseline and hit swinging half volleys because he had more margin than I did. And uh, Andre tried to switch at a certain point in his career. He did switch to a smaller frame because he felt like it was easier to manipulate and hit angles. And maybe there is a case to be made for that. Um, but I think for me it was more my stubbornness than than uh, than a, a trial and error. I never tried a racket that was much bigger. Um, I was very comfortable with what I was playing with at the time. But I think there is a big advantage, and and I think you can you can look to quotes from Pete Sampras where he talks about regretting that he didn't try a bigger frame as well. He thought it would have helped him at the French Open um, had he had he shifted away. But um, you know that's what's the, the beauty for the the person at home. You can go to your pro shop or or you know. Sports warehouse, wherever you go to get your equipment, and you can try everything. You know, you can go out and just test gear. I mean, read your column and get all the inside skinny to, you know, what gear is doing for you in different ways. Read the reviews and kind of, okay, that's that's how I play. That sounds like me. Let me try those frames and those strings. And uh, I think it's it's an exciting time. And I think that also the thing that that it is expensive. I'll grant you that relative to to just buying a racket, but custom fitting a racket for the way that you swing is something that every single pro does. And I'll grant you that, that, that the pros are more incentivized than, than the people at home. But if you're a serious tennis player, I think going in and, and having your pro look at you and say, okay, here's, here's the way that you play the game. You may want to, uh, you're a volleyer, you may want a little more weight on the head of your racket because it stabilizes you for the volleys. Okay, you're more of a ground stroker. You may want a lighter head, a little more weight in the grip so the racket head goes through quicker and you can create more angles. Rafael Nadal plays with a very headlight racket compared to the norm because he needs to create racket head acceleration to do what he does. Roger Federer, on the contrary, has a heavier racket in the head because he's trying to drive the ball through the court and he's a more all-court player. So, you know, people at home can take a, take a lesson from that one. I think everyone would agree that, you know, a larger head racket is easier to play with and, mm -hmm. and most pros are using it versus what you're saying, the 85 square oh. inch that you used. But if you compare the two, like 80, 85 or 90 square inch versus like a 100 square inch mm -hmm. Babylon, are there still some things that a smaller head racket can do that a bigger head racket can't? Certain shots that it's good for? Or I, don't, I don't believe that that's true. I think that, I think that if you work with your, your uh, head weight and your swing weight setup, you won't miss anything. I mean, the, the, the thought is that a smaller head maybe is a little bit more maneuverable and that you can create more angles. 
but I don't believe that that is necessarily infallible. I, I think that you can create angles with a lighter head, bigger racket too. I've switched to the 102, the Don A. I don't see any difference in any feel, any angles, any of that stuff from what I was playing with before. So my personal example is that no, there is no difference. Uh, but but rackets are very personal. You you have to feel what's right in your hand. You have to uh, spend some time with it, get to know your racket, and and, and if it uh, if it's time for a change, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to let it rip. <laughs> So you were saying earlier that you, you work with Roman Prokes, who's a pretty famous racket technician. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of recreational players realize that the pros have custom handles. A yeah. lot of them use custom grips. Sure. Did you use the custom grip yeah. playing, and, and what do you think it afforded you? Uh, well, yes, I've, I've been getting my rackets uh, customized top to bottom for 25, 24 years, something like that. And the custom grip is, is something where when you switch rackets, when you're playing at a very high level and you have to switch rackets in a match, you want everything to feel exactly the same. You don't want to no notice a difference. And there are times when you can get a racket up from a factory uh, off the shelf where a four and a half grip and a four and a half grip will just be slightly off. And I experienced that myself with my, my pro staffs. And that's why I, I started getting them customized. And uh, it's just, it just pretends on how particular you want to be. But I think it's important to have consistency and, and those. Uh, having those, basically, I just handed a racket that I liked and said, "Replicate this," and that's what Roman does. That's what his competitors do as well. How important are people like Roman to, to players on tour? The racket technicians, the stringers. They're critical, absolutely critical, because none of us know how to weight and balance our rackets or make those grips. So they, that's a, they have an art and a science that, that we don't have. All right, thanks so much for talking to me today, Jim. Hey, it's great to be with you.